Librarian Tiff has made a return and I could not be more excited to say that to you right now. Librarian Tiff is back. Hey guys, it's Tiff and welcome back to my channel. You already know what today's video is, so I do not need to tell you twice. What is up? How are you? I love you and let's get right on into it. Wow, guys, hey, welcome back. Um, for those of you who don't know, I moved. I'm in a new space. I am in my new apartment that still has no furniture, but I have moved from Alaska back to the lower 48. I am back in the Missouri area and it is so utterly weird, but we've been back a little over a month. And again, our apartment still has no furniture, but that will be changing hopefully within the next like week or two. But anyways, as you guys know, we're gonna be talking about all the books I read in April and May. And let me just say, because of the move, I was in the biggest slump am, still am, in the biggest slump I have ever been in in my entire life. And it has sucked. Literally between April and May, I have read three books, which is so bad for me because normally I read an average of six books a month. So the fact that I've read three in two months is absolutely awful. And hopefully June is the month to fully get me out of my reading slump. I'm so excited for all the reading vlogs I'm gonna be filming this month and just all the videos I'm gonna be doing. So stay tuned for that. I'm so excited, but that's not what this is about. This is about the books that I read in April and May. So let's freaking get into it. The first book that I finished is called Miracle on 49th Street by Mike Lupicia Lupica. I don't know how to say his last name. If you saw one of my vlogs that this was in, this is a book that Makai picked for me to read because he ended up reading The Inheritance Games for me. So I read one for him. And this is a book that he read literally in like middle school or something. So it's a very young YA book. And for the most part, I did really enjoy it, but I had some nitpicky things that I just didn't love. First of all, we're in third person. So sometimes it gets very, very confusing just the way it's written. For example, in most books, when you are jumping time frame a little bit, there is a little symbol to signify that we are moving in time a little bit. Let me find an example. So like in this, we are jumping time. There is a little symbol. In this book, there was none of that. So sometimes you'd be skipping hours and hours and hours later, and you would just have to figure it out by continuing to read a couple more lines and then you'd be like oh I'm not confused anymore I guess I get it now it was really weird and I just didn't like that aspect of it also this is the weirdest thing I've never read anything like this in a book but we were constantly and I mean at least 10 times referring to our main girl's best friend as a frog that he was so fat that his body was shaped as a frog and I don't understand first of all why that needed to even be said once but the fact that it was repeated so many times I just don't understand why we are talking about a child's body that way. It's kind of crazy and I didn't like it. I really, really hated that aspect of it actually. And that dropped the rating quite a bit for me because I actually read this book fairly quickly. I like flew through it because it was very captivating and I liked the storyline of it. We basically have this girl whose mother dies and she's trying to connect with her father that doesn't even know she exists. It's kind of like the game plan if you've ever seen that Disney movie, but instead it's basketball and obviously there is other differences like calling the best friends body a frog. But yeah, so I liked the storyline, but again, there was just nitpicky things that I didn't love about it. So for that, I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. It was good. It was a very fast paced read, but again, I have very valid reasons for not liking it that much. And then the next book I finished is Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. I finished this in April, I believe. Yes, I finished this in April. So I read those two books in April. This is the last book I read in April and I loved this. This I also started reading in a reading vlog. So if you haven't seen that and you wanna see some of my reactions to this book, you can go watch that. I loved this so, so much. I quite literally was 10 pages in and I remember vividly looking down at my Kindle to see what page I was on and being like, I'm on page 10 and I already think this is gonna be a five-star read. I was already so invested and enthralled and in love with our main characters and with the story that we were going on with them and just the world and everything. And it held up to that five-star rating. I loved this so, so much. This book deals with a lot of heavy topics. So I would say if you haven't read this and you're looking to maybe start this series, because this is the first in the Boys of Tommen series, I would definitely say if you are someone that does have trigger warnings that trigger you, 
obviously. Look them up because this does deal with very, very brutal things and it does go into detail of some of those things and it is very hard to read. It is honestly a heartbreaking story, but it is also beautiful at the same time. And that sounds so weird, but if you read it or you've read it, I think you understand what I mean. It's so good. I'm so utterly in love with Johnny and Shannon and just everything about this book and this world. I have fallen so in love with them and I cannot wait to finish the second one, which is Keeping 13. I am currently reading it and I cannot wait to eventually finish it and continue the series because it's so, so good. I ended up giving this a five star. It's so good. Highly, highly recommend. Could not say enough good things about this book. So please read it. And the last book to talk about since I only read three books, and this is the literal only book I finished in the month of May, which is very sad because it is under 300 pages. So if that doesn't tell you how little I have read, I don't know what will. But anyways, we have A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Mass. This is the novella after Court of Wings and Ruin and right before A Court of Silver Flames, which I'm currently reading and I'm halfway through. So it's not like I only read this. I have been reading other things. I just haven't finished anything else. Okay. Okay. But I absolutely loved this. I did end up giving this five stars. And you want to know why? Because the vibes, the vibes were perfect. I love this world so much. I genuinely think that this may be like in my top three series that I've read. I love these characters in a way that I don't love any other characters. Now, let me explain because the Eden series by Devaney Perry is truly probably my favorite series, but it almost is like tied with this. And this is almost above it in the sense that I am way more connected with these characters and that might be because these books are way longer and unlike the Eden series all of the books you're still with the same characters whereas the other ones are interconnected standalone so you're following a different couple each time. I cannot describe the amount of songs particularly Taylor Swift songs that I listen to and will just be like oh my god this is Feyre or oh my god this is Reese or oh my god this is so Akatar coded. I genuinely have never loved a series and a group of fictional characters the way I love them. So being in this little short novella where everything is honestly just so fun and happy and peachy and we're just going along during winter solstice, which is also Feyre's birthday, and just being with our besties was the best vibes ever. And I loved every second of it. It was so good, especially being in this slump to just read a book and just be in love with it and just feel like I was at home. So that's how this felt. Absolutely loved it. Again, five stars. I know it's so short but I can't give it anything lower than that because genuinely I loved it so much. That is all the books that I read in April and May. Again, huge reading slump, but what can you do? Literally nothing. I will hopefully be getting out of it soon. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are not already because we have a lot of fun over here and we want you to join the fun. With that being said, I love you guys so, so much and I will see you in the next one. Peace. And I just realized I didn't get a thumbnail. So I hope there's a thumbnail in there. Okay, there we have it. <laughs> hey guys, oh, there for a while I literally did lose these glasses though. And coincidentally enough, it was almost the entire time I was blonde. And now that my hair is brown again, I found them. But I'm one of those people that thinks everything is a sign and means something. So I'm just kind of crazy. <laughs> but I have moved it. What? There was just Nick Bikki. What? <laughs> <laughs>